Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Massive roster developments last night. Shazam to Evil Geniuses, trialling with that World Championship winning team with Bustio believed to be going to 100 Thieves in the new year. Shazam could be their new IGL, but the big story really today is on Sentinels. The show match coming up today, the Sen starting team, presumably up against the team Tarek, the Avengers squad that he's managed to put together. Pancada though, not appearing on the main team, but instead on Tarek's team that they're playing against. Is this effectively official confirmation that Pancada is benched from the starting roster and will not be on that team going forward with Zelsis taking his place. This would be a wild decision if it's true, but there really isn't too many other explanations given the results we are about to see. Very much to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Firstly, this is kind of crazy. We saw a lot of Lucas Rojo over the last couple of days. The um, you know, teams he was coaching for and now he's out the other day, you know, like Casemiro Esports basically he was part of. Then he was gone, owners coming in and saying, but now he's reached an agreement with FC Barcelona Valorant to join them. So we saw yesterday the news that FC Barcelona are going to have the Valorant team. And um, yeah, Lucas Rojo is going to walk apparently right into that role. So pretty cool stuff. And um, I guess hopefully it works out this one for all parties. But we've got to just talk about the Rostermania stuff. Because firstly, Evil Genius is. There's been a few options considered for EG. They currently have pretty much like two players right now, as um, we see here that Ethan seemingly is gone. Demon 1 might still be there. We don't really know what the contract situation is, whether it's possible to get the buyouts done. There's a lot of theories right now that NRG are going to get Ethan and Demon 1 and they're going to be a super team. And I'd be very excited to see that happen if it can happen, if it does happen. And Ethan seemingly is gone. We don't really know on Demon 1. Jorgamo Com, they're still there. So they've been looking for basically to round out their team. There's been some rumors as well that Screwface could be an option, but Corey continues to play in the team. He seemingly is going to be a new addition in place of Ethan, but they've gone through a couple of different in-game leaders to try and figure out what they're going to do in place of Bustio, it seems. They've tried Stella, and now they've tried Shazam. Yesterday, this was spotted, which we can see here. Shazam, Com, Jorgamo, Corey. Now, sure, they're down 4-9 to a team that we can't really see who they are, unfortunately, but um, still, Shazam was playing with these guys. So Shazam considered as maybe the IGL. It kind of depends who they have as their fifth man, but I'm guessing that's the plan is for Shazam to maybe come in as their you know, new IGL and Orper, I guess, on the team, which would be really exciting if Shazam got this opportunity again back in the league on the team that, you know, won the world championship. Of course, they've still got at least a couple of reigning champions over there. If Demon 1's still there, we don't really know. But um, the presumption is at the moment that Demon 1 and Ethan are probably gone. And if they are gone, you'd think that's got to be the NRG. We know that EG, you know, they've got a lot of money. They've got to spend on lawsuits. So they've got to get that money from somewhere. And that might be from selling those top players to a team like NRG and therefore signing others instead. But Corey continues to play with them. Shazam coming in maybe as their IGL. It's early days. It's trials. We don't know what they'll decide. They could change their mind and, okay... They're down 4-9 here, so maybe they weren't massively impressed with Shazam. I don't know. And maybe Stella could come back. But of the options, Shazam's got to be up there as one of the options that makes the most sense. But speaking of Shazam, we know that he has some history with another big organization. That, of course, being Sentinels. And as Shazam says, playing a little streamer team, Showmatch versus Sentimo at 8 Central times. That, of course, is today. We saw this talked about yesterday. That Sentinels, their starting roster, presumably their starting roster, are playing up against Team Tarek, who is... Um, you know, just for a good bit of content and fair play to Sentinels, keeping things entertaining. And we heard yesterday that Tarek is putting together a bit of a super team and this is the super team they're putting together. This is pretty crazy stuff. So, I mean, let's just go through it one by one, I suppose. Team Tarek. So here's Tarek. We've got Shazam back in the team, which is nice to see that the relationship between Shazam and Sentinels isn't completely torched because, you know, let's be honest, at the end of Shazam's tenure on Sen, it didn't end particularly amicably. They'd brought in Shroud just before and Shazam was basically saying that they told him that, sure, if you just put up with Shroud because we're going to do this for clout, then in the new season, we'll offer you a spot to stay around on the team. So just accept Shroud and, you know, do whatever happens there and then we'll give you an offer next season. Turned out, of course, they didn't offer Shazam to stay. 
There was quite a lot of conflict on Twitter between Shazam and uh, Rob Moore, the CEO, over that whole discussion at the time. And, um, you know, we kind of wonder, well, you know, is that relationship ever going to mend itself? But enough, it seems to have Shazam back in the team, which is cool to see. So Boostio, we thought maybe it'd be Som and FNS. We talked about that yesterday. Som is here, so that's cool. But at no FNS, but instead, Boostio plays, which is, um, so I think it was his birthday the other day. So happy birthday to Boostio. But yeah, world championship winning in-game leader, quite possibly a player that will join 100 Thieves in the near future and probably isn't on EG anymore because they're practicing with Shazam or with uh, Stella or whatever as their new in-game leader. So Boostio, Som, Tarek, Shazam and then Pancada. And this is the thing that caught people's eyes. So hang on a second here. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean Pancada is not on the starting team? Because over the last few days, and you know, I've raised this speculation plenty of times and for good reason, I thought, that Pancada was not in their roster they were practicing with. So for some time, Pancada was unwell. You know, he was unwell. And then Zelsis came in to substitute in for him. He played well, right? And Pancada in the first series they played as a show match didn't do so well. They lost the series. Zelsis comes in they start to do somewhat better and um but still people thought well makes more sense pancada better on that role fns said it outright that he thinks it's you know no brainer you keep pancada world championship winner you know on that controller role makes more sense than zelsis does so we generally thought all right well when pancada is better again then he's gonna play but then tens got on well Tens then was back well again and was playing in the team and Pancada was still out of the team. So it's like, well, is Pancada still unwell for this long? Sure, maybe so. Maybe that's why they're still practicing with Zelsis. That was the theory that was going around was like, okay, maybe Pancada's still not feeling 100%. But now we get this. Pancada is playing in the show match against Sentinels. So he's clearly well enough to play. And it seems he was streaming the other, you know, day as well. You see this clip goes on Twitter yesterday and Zelda's is like, wait, we need you. And people are saying, oh, calling this guy a snake or whatever the replies. But um, yeah, crazy stuff. But Pancada seems... Surely he's well enough now to play, and he's literally playing in the show match today, but not on the Sentinels roster, playing on the roster they are playing against. So is this effectively confirmation that Pancard has been benched? I mean, you know, they haven't said it outright, but and maybe they're just still going to rotate as a six-man situation to find what makes the most sense. But um, for the time being, Zelsis is their starting fifth player because there's no other explanation. So James of F here said on um, on the VLR last night that at this point he doesn't even really know who the substitute is and who the starting player is. But again, he did say and actually shared a screenshot that um, they were practicing yesterday again with, with Zelsis, right? We see here they're playing against M80, Xander, Nitro and co. They played, you know, Zelkin, of course, Zelsis, sassy tens still on the team together so as far as i'm concerned there's no other explanation at this point that um Zelsis is their preferred fifth man and whatever that means for roles and for comms and all this stuff that's another question but um yeah as far as i can see pankard has basically been benched now and as um yeah he goes on to say there's um you know they say play that they were 10 to up against m80 minus pankard plus Zelsis. there was also that other scrum we saw between eg with shazam and um you know of course no ethan no boostio so yeah presumably Demon 1 could still be there on EG, but we're not really sure because he wasn't in the screenshot. So that's a question. But I'm very much intrigued to your thoughts on this in the comment section below because I think that's, you know, a lot of us thought surely Zelsis might be there if, you know, it was kind of wild to think that he was still practicing with the team for so long, even as just a substitute. But it seems like he's managed to kind of not exactly snake his way in, but um, there really isn't too many other ways to read what we're currently seeing than the fact that, yeah, Zelsis is now their preferred target for the team as opposed to Pancada staying around. FNS was not convinced the other day at all that was a good idea. Like, he was definitely of the opinion that Zelsis out of the team on the substitute role makes the most sense. And I think that's what Zelsis planned for you know, quite a large part of the season. Sure, he wants to play again, but he made it quite clear that, yeah, you know, he's going to be there for content, build his own brand, this type of stuff. Probably didn't expect to be on the team this quickly, but um, that is what we are basically seeing right now. It's also a big opportunity for Pancada because, you know, sure, they're playing the show match today. Sentinels, as an actual team of five, should win rather than this pickup team with good players, but nonetheless, it's a pickup team. But let's say Pancada was to come into this series, play really well, like um, just dominate the server on the Omen or whatever the case might be, completely control a diff Zeltis on the other side. You know, he has an opportunity to make a bit of a statement today, but um, it's obviously going to be tricky to do so. 
But I wonder what Pancada thinks about this whole saga. And Zelsis himself is really rather clear on the situation. Also, Sentinel's Tarek show match is set. These are the times, so 6 p.m. Pacific tonight. Bustio, Som, Tarek, Pancada, Shazam. And um, of course, himself, therefore, being on the Sentinel's team as it stands. There's also been some funny things going around for VLR here. Like, what a masterclass of Tarek as they blow through Sentinel's in back-to-back 13 zeros. So I'm guessing, yeah, best of three. So there's going to be a couple of maps here for Pancada and, you know, Tarek those guys to show that they are you know the superior team and Sentinels okay they haven't done an official tweet to say yet yeah, Zelsis and Pancard are out but you know you can read between the lines and what's happened over the last couple of days just before we close out then wanted to mention this because let's not forget Madrid Masters only two teams per region qualify at the start of the year so out of the 11 teams per region as it is now only two make it what will those two teams be these are Plat Chat's very early predictions here on the way the rosters are going to go and I think in general this isn't all that bad. I think mostly people are looking at the fact that EG are down and F. I think that's just because they're roasting them really at the organizational decisions. But let's look at the S and the A tiers. So, okay, Fnatic, Paper X, Na'Vi, Lev, right? Leviathan. They look really good. And, you know, if I had to predict a team that's going to get through to Masters Madrid out of the Americas teams, I would say Lev is like my most likely team to make it through. The way they looked the other day and just how good their team is on paper. Outside of that, their next top teams in the Americas are NRG, Loud, Sen, G2, really. Which, um, and I'm not sure G2 will make it to Masters Madrid. I think it's between Sen and NRG. Loud will be good, but I'm not sure they'll be... You know, they should be good, but I don't know if they're going to be top two in America's good this season, given that they've lost Aspass and, you know, stuff like that. Maybe they'll be fine, but I think there's some work to do. The fact that they put NRG S tier is, you know, do they know something, right? Do they know that it's, are they just presuming that it's Ethan Demon 1 potentially in there as well? Maybe even it's just Ethan, but, you know, right now they don't really, they only have two players in NRG, technically, Victor Crashies, but it's going to be Victor Crashies, Marv, Ethan, probably plus one. And if that plus one is Demon 1, then sure, S tier up there with Lev and the rest of the guys of the world, sure. But um, that's a bit of a question. So, yeah, for now, of the rosters we know, I would probably lean the way of um, Lev Sentinels being the two teams that I would predict to make it to Masters uh, Madrid but I think it's very early days on that one and then sure from the EMEA side you're looking Fnatic probably Na'Vi I mean yeah they've got artists back now I guess you want to lead their way and then Paper X DRX in the Pacific and then of course in terms of Chinese teams we shall see you know Edward Gaming plus one make it through you'd imagine over there but very much on Twitter your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time